Hey, look at that. I'm still alive. What do you know? I am so sorry. It has been so long. Um, I've just been on vacation, mostly. And uh, if you pay attention to Twitter at all, you will know that I've been streaming a lot, too. So it's not like I've actually gone anywhere. Uh, but I haven't done a vlog in a while, which means the channel has been very, um, I don't know. Not a lot's happened on this channel in a little while, but we did just watch the new episode of Flash, so we actually have something to talk about today. It was a good one. It was a good one. I was a little worried that after last week's phenomenal time travel episode, uh, it wouldn't be able to recover from uh, time travel well, and uh, that was a fear of mine because... Uh, usually when things do time travel, they don't do it right. And uh, this time around, I think they might have done it. I think they might have done the time travel episode, or episodes, or just have time traveling as a mechanic in your TV show and actually use it appropriately. Of course, that could be because uh, The Flash has a long history of using time travel appropriately. So, you know, it's not like they're starting from scratch here. What do I want? Okay, so that being said, there were a few you know, things that I said last time, like, some things wouldn't have changed due to the fact that Barry, given that he's the only one that went back in time, alright? So in order for time travel to function, and in order for the person traveling through time to actually make a difference in events, they need to have been previously aware of those events in order to change them. Number one. I do not recall the fact that Barry knew where Martin was, okay? He immediately goes straight to the correct apartment, to the correct room, although he was clearly searching, but he went to the right building and found the fucker and then put him in the prison, okay? I don't think that's accurate because I'm pretty sure only Joe knew where that was and by extension, Eddie. So I don't think Barry knew where he was, so he couldn't have done that. Number two. Snart and Heatwave going after the mob boss family would have occurred anyway. It would have occurred anyway. How Cisco got there wouldn't have. That that was directly Barry's fault. Because by catching Martin early, Cisco goes to the birthday party, has a shitty day, goes out drinking, meets Lisa. Lisa brings him back to her place. She meets Snart, blah, blah, the guns are made. But the the initial capturing of Martin would not have occurred and it shouldn't have occurred because Barry didn't know that's where he was. Um, so I call shenanigans on that one. Uh, let's see what else occurred. Um, it's interesting to me that Harrison Wells's time traveling computer still calls him Harrison Wells even though we know that's not his real name. Weird. What else happened? Not a whole heck of a lot to be quite honest. Um, Cisco is fine. I like, I always love this. This is a, this is a trope that I'm always a big fan of. Bad guy does something to make good guy, um, do something, right? So, uh, Captain Cold shoots Cisco's brother's fingertips with his cold gun and instantly knows that's first degree frostbite. It's gonna cause his blood vessels, you know. How does he know exactly where to aim the gun and where, like, in what proximity to the extremities in order to, like, differentiate between first degree frostbite and second degree frostbite and third degree, like, how does he know? Like, I get that he likes cold, but come on! That's first degree frostbite. I don't have to look at his hands any closer or just nip. That's first degree frostbite. I love shit like that. That's always great. Um, what else? Uh, classic brother competition, always jealous of you, man, you were jealous of me, you were the golden boy, blah, blah, blah. You know, it's, it's a trope that we've seen a lot before, but it's not any less well done here than it has been in the past, so we can't fault it there. Uh, what else happened? Uh, in particular with Lisa Snart, okay, the gold gun. I don't care if that was in the comic book. That gun's stupid as shit. Okay, cold gun makes a little bit of sense. The heat gun makes a lot of sense. That's just a miniature flamethrower, okay? The liquid gold gun makes no sense. Okay, first off, right, first off, in order for you to have a gun that fires molten gold, that gun would both A, be unbelievably hot, and B, would weigh a ton. So, I call shenanigans 
on her being able to hold the goddamn thing, let alone lift the fucking thing, okay? Because in order for you to have enough molten gold in order to cover a five foot, like five and a half foot plus man from head to toe with access to make spiky shit, that's a fuck ton of gold. Okay? Also, that's expensive. Where are you getting all of this gold? Okay? With the heat gun, that's like, that's like gas, okay? And it's ignited when it leaves the gun, like a flamethrower. The cold gun is powered by some form of liquid nitrogen, presumably, that's turned, it's like cold fusion or something like that, okay? It's an internal chemical engine. The gold gun is fucking molten gold in a gun that somehow fires. Okay, I also call it shenanigans that Cisco would have been able to create such a device in the first place, let alone outside of his lab where he would have all of his materials in order to, like, he was in a fucking living room, man. He made a molten gold projectile gun that can both be, like, it's cold, you can hold the goddamn thing, and you can lift the goddamn thing, and no, I'm just, that, that particular gun is bullshit. When she said she wanted something like, pretty and toxic or whatever the hell she said. I thought she was gonna get some kind of like poison dart gun or like poison gas, like a sludge gun or something like that. That would've made more sense. But a liquid gold gun is preposterous in the extreme. So I call bullshit on that. What else happened? Uh, Iris's um, newspaper friend is dead and that would not have happened Actually, that could have also that could have happened um, if Barry hadn't done the time travel thing. That could have happened. I want to point out that that could have happened. Also, I do want to point out that Harrison Wells's "Whenever you fuck with time, you're gonna create something worse" story is bullshit in this instance because the whole Captain Cold heat wave, all of that, all of it would have occurred regardless. Okay, because that shit was happening outside the known timeline of what Barry was doing. It probably happened last week. And they just weren't paying attention to it because of all this other shit. It would have happened anyway. It's not like Captain Cold was just sitting there going like, I'm gonna take out the Santino family. Let's go. It would have happened anyway, because that, you know. So don't mess with time, Barry. Bad shit will happen even worse. No, it would have happened anyway. So, no. No to that, Dr. Wells. And there was one other thing. One other thing. Okay. So, Barry makes a fool of himself with Iris. He breaks up with Linda, uh, which is fine because Linda marries Wally uh, West, I believe. And um, he goes through all this shit, right? And then Eddie punches Barry for saying all that shit to Iris. And then at the end of the episode, how do they fix it? By pretending Barry suffers a mental illness from being struck by lightning called lightning psychosis. Okay, first off, that's offensive to people that have mental illnesses. Second of all, what a cop out. Are you kidding me? That's how they solve it? It's, oh no, Barry's not in full control of his emotions or actions because he was struck by lightning and is insane. So now, did you look at Eddie and Iris do not look at Barry the same way again because now in the back of their mind, they're gonna say this, oh, it's not his fault. He was struck by lightning. He suffers from lightning psychosis. And they won't be able to like, oh, that's cute, Barry. Oh, you get on, you know, it's just like, they're gonna treat him way differently because now he has this mental disease where he can't control his emotions, his actions, or, what he, or anything. It's not his fault. He was struck by lightning. That is a huge cop out. It's like at the end of Star Trek Into Darkness where they cured death. It's, it's just like, oh, that now they have this cure-all answer to everything that's ever weird with Barry ever again. Lightning psychosis. <sighs> it's, it's dumb. I love Flash as much as the next guy, but that's just fucking stupid. <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh, jeez Louise. So yeah, there you go. That's the new episode of Flash. Uh, what else is going on? It was really good, so you should see it anyway. And next week we got Mark Hamill and I'm really excited. Uh, what else is there to talk about? Um, the new Game of Thrones Telltale episode is out. It is currently rendering. Uh, it started about an hour ago, because I watched Flash in the meantime, and it still has another fucking three hours to go. It's a big episode. It's almost two hours. Um, it's fantastic. It's some of the best, um, Telltale story writing they've ever done, in my opinion. Episode three, it's awesome. It fucking rocks. 
which begs the goddamn question of why Tales from the Borderlands is suffering so badly when you can pull shit like this out. Come on! Put some of these guys in that team, because goddamn it, Tales from the Borderlands sucks. I disagree with every critic out there. Tales from Borderlands is hilarious! It's so funny! Whoa! No, it's not. It's trying too hard and it's accomplishing nothing. So yeah, there's there's my view on that whole Telltale stuff. I think that's about it. Border or Bloodborne came out, and I'm actually wearing my Bloodborne shirt. It looks like a normal t-shirt for you guys, but if I stand out, you can actually see the Bloodborne guy right there, and it says Bloodborne on the back. But uh, yeah, I love the shirt. Um, I in about an hour. So my problem, right, is it's not a problem. This is a major first world problem. Bloodborne came out, I can't play it. I want to watch other people play it. But so many people are playing it that I would want to watch play it, I don't know who to watch. It's such a big problem for me. Like, Maximilian is probably streaming right now playing Bloodborne, but I know for a fact in like an hour and ten minutes, Strippin' is going to be playing Bloodborne. And I started playing Dark Souls because of Strippin'. So I will watch that motherfucker play Bloodborne. I'm not watching anybody else. I don't know diddly squat about Bloodborne except for what I played at PAX and the t-shirt. I will watch Strippin' play Bloodborne. It's being loyal to the correct people. That's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. Yep, uh, is there anything else really to talk about? Arrows tomorrow. I bought textbooks for the new quarter, which begins in a week. Uh, like, this time next week, I will be in classes. And do 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 Starting a new workout regime. It's going well so far. I'm going to have pasta tonight. I think that's about it. Thank you very much for watching, everybody. I hope you all are having a great week. I will see you tomorrow for our conversation about the new Arrow episode. Predictions? Probably going to suck, but we have to watch it anyway. And I'll see you then. Have a good one, guys.